Hey, this is Teddy Greenstein, Senior Editor at PointsBet, and welcome back to The Range. The Range is where you go before you play, and hopefully it's where you go before you place your golf bets. As always, I'm joined by the lovely and talented Paige, a former professional golfer before she became an internet sensation and teamed with PointsBet. So Paige, a lot to get to this week. We'll, of course, talk about our picks for Pebble Beach. But I want to start by looking back. So what was it like being out at TPC Scottsdale and not having people pour beer on you? <laughs> Very different vibe from previous years, but it was so cool to be at a PGA Tour event and have fans there. They limited it to only 5,000 fans per day. And at times it felt normal. I saw Jordan Spieth chip in on 10, third round, everyone cheered. And I was like, is this, is this real life? Is this normal? I love this. This is so great to get back to that. But then you'd go to, you know, the front nine, there was no one there. It almost felt like a private event. So it was so much fun to experience the waste management in a little bit of a different life where it's not just completely crazy all the time. I do miss that, but it was fun to still just be out there, be at a, a tour event again and feel like life was back to normal for a second. That is refreshing. So Sunday was obviously a wild ride. When the day started, we were looking at Xander Schauffele at minus 112, Spieth at plus 250, and the field at plus 250. Honesty check time. Who would you have taken Sunday morning with those choices? I was going to take Xander. After Jordan Spieth shot the 61, I didn't think he was going to back it up, and he didn't. He shot one over, but he's back. I mean, you have to give him some props for that. It was great to see him in the mix again. I thought Xander was going to close it out, but that tee shot on 17, that snap hook straight in the water, I mean, just that <laughs> choke, flat out choke. And it was hard to watch. Is he now the new Tony Finau where they can't get that win? Coffee is for closers. <laughs> so Xander and Tony... They're drinking water. They're drinking something other than coffee. There's no question neither one of those guys could get it done. Kind of troubling there. Um, you mentioned Spieth. Heading into Scottsdale, he was 150 to 1, but he did have, you know, that 61 and several good rounds. Now, heading into Pebble, he is 22 to 1. Are you a believer in him? And then I think this also lends itself to mention your name a bet early in this uh, edition of the range. So here's the thing. I my heart says yes, and that's where my name of it is coming into play here. So my boost of the week is Jordan Speed to finish in the top 10 at plus 300. It was boosted from plus 280. So I am rooting for Jordan Speed. Golf is better when he's in the mix. I will admit that I wasn't the biggest Jordan Speed fan when he was at the top of his game. I found him to be just a little bit whiny, but I miss that now. I love the way he talks to his golf ball. I miss his energy. I miss him being in the mix. So it's good that he's back and I want him to play well and to carry that momentum that he had in the waste management into Pebble. Yeah, his, his chit chats with Greller were, were priceless. Some of those stuff, some of that material with his caddy, uh, I thought was great. I was trying to, you know, you'd be watching this and you'd be just begging the TV commentators, shut up. We want to hear <laughs> these guys and their interaction. So I totally agree with you about Spieth. It, it's Spieth and it's Tiger. I think those are still the number two uh, needle movers. Uh, but there are some other ones, one of whom is Dustin Johnson, and we thought he was going to be moving the needle this weekend at Pebble. Uh, he was going to, he was plus 375. He was an overwhelming favorite, one of the most heavily favored players for an event, I think in like four years. But he bowed out after returning uh, from Saudi Arabia. What do you make of, uh, of his exit here? Maybe he's just tired. He needs a little nappy to recuperate after that little trip and winning. I mean, he doesn't have to play this tournament if he doesn't want to play. And he's that good that he was going to show up and win. Maybe he thought it was too easy. Maybe he's like, no one in the field. I'm playing too good. I need more of a challenge. So I'll take this week off. It's got to be it. I mean, maybe it's the cool, <laughs> crappy temperature. It's going to be like the 50s, heavy ball. But... I don't know. I think we should just start a wild rumor about something else. I mean, with, with, with DJ, kind of every rumor is believable, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe. So here is my wild rumor with DJ. I don't know if you guys saw this, but he nailed a spectator in the back in Saudi Arabia. Maybe he is stuck there now. I don't know. Maybe it's against the rules or something, but he can't travel after that. 
Poor DJ, locked in confinement in Saudi, and uh, this is this is the biggest story in golf right now. We've broken it here on Points Bet. <laughs> People probably didn't know, but now they do. The truth can be told. Um, all right, so before we move on to uh, to a couple of our picks, these guys will be playing at Pebble Beach. They'll be playing at Spyglass. Have you played both of those courses, and what's your take on them? So I've only played Pebble out of the course there, and it's incredible. So beautiful. The views, walking around, walking along the ocean, you can't have a bad day when you're playing. I mean, I had a bad day because I didn't play well out there. So, <laughs> But it makes it better when you have these lovely ocean views. But you have to hit it straight. I mean, it's a ball striker golf course. The greens are small. You have to be on. Your short game has to be good, and you have to make some putts. So it's kind of like every single week. The guy who hits it the best, the guy who makes the most putts is going to win. <laughs> That is. But in this case, too, I mean, the greens are some of the smallest on tour. Um, it's basically a shortish course and the ball doesn't fly very far off the tee. So you got to be able to carve the dog legs. You got to have a great iron game and you got to be able to get up and down when you miss these small greens. Did you hit the green on number seven? And do you remember what club you had into that adorable par three? I actually made a birdie there. I had a nine iron, stuck it to four feet and I made the putt. Jealous party of one right here. That is, uh, that's pretty impressive to have on your resume. It's the only accomplishment I have, so might as well talk about it. Absolutely. So let's get to the picks right now for Pebble Beach. Okay, I am starting with Francesco Molinari. Now at one point he was 33 to one, then I saw 28. He's down to 25 because Dustin Johnson just couldn't play in this event. But I think <laughs> Molinari's a good pick. He was struggling last year. He's been playing better lately. He's uh, registered a couple top tens recently, and the crummy weather is not going to affect him. The guy is an open champion. So I think Molinari is a really good bet here. Another guy I like is Kevin Streelman, Chicago guy from the Western Burbs. This guy actually has a lower scoring average at Pebble than the best in the world. Better than Phil Mickelson, better than Jason Day. He's in the under 70 club, which is which is rarefied air in the heavy air of Pebble Beach. So Streelman is a 40 to one. I like him uh, for 30 points. And my final 30 points is gonna be Harold Varner, 80 to one. I think he's a good play here because last week, not much was expected of him at Scottsdale because he's basically a low ball hitter and you have to hit it high and soft into those uh, Scottsdale greens. And he still played well. He registered a top 15. So Harold Varner, to get it done this week at Pebble, I'll probably take him as a top five and a top 10. Paige, what you got? So I have Daniel Berger at plus 1,400. This guy, he is so underrated. Such a great ball striker. Such a great young player. Be on the lookout for him. I also have Will Zalatoris at plus 2,000. He has four top 10s in his last five starts. Gonna break through. I think he's gonna get the win this week. And then also James Hahn at 66 to one. He had it. He had it at the waste management for a second. He had it going. He kind of faltered at the end, but that's fine. It's okay. I think he's gonna use that as motivation. So I have 40 on Berger, uh, 30 on Will, and 30 on Hahn for this week. Yeah, Zalatoris uh, got me a top 20 and a top 40 last week. I was happy to support Will. James Hahn had that flash. It looked like he was going to shock the world. And then, yoink, went back down. So <laughs> not so impressive there. So what bad pick are you sticking me with this week, Paige? You're going to get your boy, Phil Mickelson, plus 5,000 for the week. I know he's won here before, but it, he's just... Not the same old Phil that we know and love. So I think he's going to struggle this week. I just don't think his heart's in it anymore. I think he wants to move on with his career and maybe be done with the PGA Tour. Wow. Just crapping on this guy. A couple weeks ago, you were talking about how great his calves were, and now you're ready to put him out to pasture. What's up? I can still respect the calf game and not his golf game. That's true. Fair point. <laughs> All right. I'm sticking you with Paul Casey, and I hate to do it because he – might be the nicest and funniest guy on the PGA <laughs> Tour. I've had a chance to spend a little time with him. He's got the great British humor, great accent. I love his uh, caddy, Johnny Long Socks. Love everything about him. And, and the betting public likes him too because he's plus 1,600, so 16 to one. 
but he's been traveling a lot lately. He, I think he's going to be totally zonked. He did California, then he did two events in the Middle East, and now he's back in California with no rest in between. So I'm going to fade Paul Casey and uh, stick you with him. What do you think about that selection, Paige? Okay, these guys aren't flying coach. They're flying in their nice little luxury pod on, you know, either their private planes or first class. They're sleeping on the incline. I mean, they're getting plenty of rest. I will gladly take Casey for this one. Okay, well, uh, fire up the jet. You and I also have high <laughs> standards for travel, so I can certainly relate. Now, somebody who's uh, tasted the good life, but now is no longer there, he is the subject of my name a bet slash booster this week, and that is David Duvall. I was looking at the field and I was saying like, whoa, wait a second, David Duvall plays this event? Yeah, he plays this event every year. Last year, sadly, he shot 84 in the first round and then withdrew. So I asked our traders, what are the odds that David Duvall will make the cut? And they have boosted that from 20 to one to 25 to one. <laughs> this poor guy's 25 to 1 just to make the cut. If he does, that would be amazing. Would you take this action at 25 to 1, Paige? When I played in professional events, those were my odds, and I never made a cut except for one. So there's hope. If I can make a cut, maybe he could still make a cut. So I'll give that to him. But David Duvall's a legend. He's a little bit older than my time, so I don't know too, too much about him, but he was one of my dad's favorite golfers. Uh, you have to root for him with the mock turtlenecks and the sunglasses. I mean, the 59, I've seen that a lot. So yeah, I think maybe he still has some game in him. Yeah, he is a Mr. 59. I feel like he made the Oakley wraparound shades famous. <laughs> he was the guy on the course who like wouldn't talk to anybody. I think people were intimidated by him, even though he's a small guy, but he was like so quiet. And at his peak, nobody struck the ball better. Do you agree? Again, I didn't really watch much, much golf at that time because I was um, in my mom's belly, but I'm sure it was true. <laughs> Fair enough, Paige. All right, so let's close out with this. Download the Points Bet app if you haven't already. Bet on golf. It's incredible, especially now with no football. I mean, there's going to be an incredible amount of live betting, but you don't have to wait until Thursday for the event to begin. We'll be offering markets on top five, top 10, top 20. We'll probably have hole-in-one stuff out there. Of course, we'll have the head-to-head -head matchup. So if there's somebody you want to fade, you can take them in some individual matchups and we'll even have some points betting options. So for everyone out there, check out Golf Betting on Points Bet. And Paige, thank you so much again for uh, being the co-host. Thank you. All right. See you, everybody.